and you welcome back to morning express and now moving deeper into more in-depth discussions uh, on the program this morning the new pump uh, fuel pump price uh, has caused commuters to pay a 50 percent surge in uh, transport fares in the country and this uh, discussions will be more elaborated by our in-house analyst who will be joining us virtually barrister elias ofo is on the line hello and good morning barrister yeah good morning to you well it's morning, wonderful how are you very well thank you it's wonderful to have you join us on the program oh same here all right v very quickly I, I i believe um you're not oblivious of the current situation in the country uh motorists are groaning people are finding it more and more difficult to get around the roads especially in abuja here as county as people are stranded on the expressways or on the streets looking for ways to commute to work or to anywhere that they are going to firstly i, I just want to get your reaction to first the new pump price and how difficult it is for nigerians to get by in this uh, time of devastating economic downturn okay um uh, we are just going to continue saying it and how long are we going to say it economic policies in this time um that we know that the the the, the, the country is in a pure frenzy the people are no longer finding it finding it easy to do anything, and um, bringing up some of these things, I, I don't know the, the fuel pump price that, like we know, starting from the time subsidy was removed, it cost a lot of cost a lot of issues in this country, cost a lot of downturn in the affairs of the people, uh, it, it cost a whole lot of groaning. And then increasing the pump price at this point is like uh, it, it is is the most insensitive to say the least most insensitive if you look at the country you find out that people are people are fed up no matter what the economists are saying no matter what the developmental calculus um is is being projected no matter what this policy is predicated upon it is most insensitive that's what i can say now it's it's something i don't know how to explain it's a time that people are saying can we survive it's, 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 it's a quasi inverse variation of his mantra, the Mr. President's mantra when he came in, where he said, allow the poor to breathe. He had maintained that. But what is happening in this present time? I had said it a lot of times. I've asked that question, who is advising Mr. President? We need to know who is advising him. We need to know his economic team. We need to know the people that are driving this this, I don't know if I, I use the word insanity, I, I don't think I would have an apology for it. I am educated, you are educated. We know that, we know that, that, that there are hard decisions to take to move things forward, but not in this form. I had preached the style of a country like Singapore that was transformed from almost third world to first world, but it wasn't like this on the paper. I have said it that if you are driving development activities driving development policies that you want a radical transformation you need to create a safety net enough safety net we are talking about we are talking about alternative energy sources we are talking about um electric cars and the rest of them and, and then the gas power the, the gas powered alternative that we have we have had that, that, that that's the cng the cng bosses you know you know when yeah, yeah. when when the people CNG, talk yes. about barrister when, when people talk about the hardship the severe hardship that Nigerians are currently faced with due to, one, the unavailability of fuel in the country or petroleum products in the country, and secondly, the increased hike, the upward trajectory in the hike of these uh, uh, petroleum products, many people will say, oh, but the federal government has given an, an alternative, which is the CNG buses. But on the other hand, other people would argue that even though the federal government has tried its best to provide the CNG buses, it appears that it is also stifling its own efforts by some of these new policies or increase in the price of fuel pump price that is stagnating growth in many sectors of the country. Don't you think so, Barrister? Availability of the CNG vehicles and all that, I have not even seen it. I have not even seen it. 
to what extent has it circulated? How, to what extent have people um, had access to it? That is to start with. The only place I know that electric vehicles have been provided is Bruno State the last time I traveled. I don't know about other states. But I know that the safety net we're talking about goes beyond that. How many CNG, how many CNG plants do we have in Nigeria? How has how has that policy been made available to the people or that initiative been made available to the people? How are the people sensitized to, to go and take the opportunity and all that? That is that's this is a cardinal question to ask. In the FCT where you and I live, we know that 80% of the vehicles are, are not CNG empowered. I don't know for what reason, but I know that it's not available. It's not available in the sense of the word, literally available. It's not available. Now, 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 the, 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 this morning on the on the news, uh, the NLC president, Comrade Joe Ajero, uh, was bitterly angered by the new fuel pump price, saying that the agreement he had with the presidency or the federal government during negotiations surrounding the new minimum wage was that the NLC would accept the 70,000 naira new minimum wage with a promise that the federal government would not increase the fuel pump price. However, this is coming as a shocker because the federal, the presidency has refuted these claims by the NLC uh, president saying that no such agreement was ever reached. Mind you, this was an agreement that was done in closed doors. So who do we believe at this point and who is lying possibly? Whether there's an agreement or no agreement, we have to listen to the cries of the people. I know there is a lot of dynamics. There are a lot of dynamics in the fuel sector. There are so many, so many. I don't know permutations and all that. A lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of um, uh, uh, dynamics and uh, different um, permutations and all that in the in, in, in the in the oil sector, the the, the the downstream, upstream, the marketers, all that. A lot of acronyms all up and down. A lot of issues involving the NMPC. But the bottom line is you need to listen to the yearnings of the people. The policies are for the people, not the people for the policy. Will everybody die for this radical transformation to take place? That is the basic question. I just want to be on a commonsensical trajectory this morning, not being so technical and all that. To say, okay, if you increase the price, this is going to happen. It's going to translate into development. Of course, I've had Mr. President make that statement a whole lot of times. The Nigerians should be patient. Nigeria should be patient because his policies are going to bring radical transformation. Patient up till when? That is the question to ask. Do you realize that people can barely feed? That is the now, now Bar Bar Barrister, if you can hear me, it, it seems to become, it has become more and more uh, difficult for Nigerians to be patient as their patience is running out. Reports in the news this morning say that in Delta State, Protest has broken out due to the increase in the new uh, uh, fuel pump price. And with this new development, are we, see, go, are we possibly going to see a reoccurrence of this particular protest in Delta State spreading across other states in the country? It appears that Nigerians have become way too tired uh, to be patient with the federal government and its policies that are strangulating. Well, Barrister, if you can if you can hear me, I believe we are having a little bit of a, a technical glitch there uh, with uh, Barrister Elias or Fo's connection. Uh, now, as we look to bring him back on the program to still give us a more in-depth uh, review of these national stories, where the LCCI, the Labour, uh, uh, the Nigeria Labour Congress, as well as other pressure groups. You know, I have said that the new four pump price will bring severe hardship on Nigerians. Opposition parties such as the People's Democratic Party have also said that the federal government's decision to increase the four pump price is an assault, an outright assault on many Nigerians. The NLC president says that the presidency has betrayed Nigerians and the NLC as well because an agreement was reached during um, the meeting between the federal government and, an L and the NLC uh, in reaching terms of the new minimum wage, which is pegged at 70,000 Naira at the moment. Now, a promise was made to the NLC president, allegedly, 
that the presidency would not increase the four pound price only if they accept this particular new minimum wage. The presidency has refuted these claims. A lot of backlash and words are flying all over the place. Who is right and who is wrong and what is best for Nigerians? These are the many questions that we will be answering with our in-house analyst, Barrister Elias Ofo. But as we look to establish, re-establish this connection, do stay tuned on the program. Hello and hello, Barrister. Are you still there? Okay, I'm here. I'm back. Sorry, I, I was kicked out. Um, I, I don't Oh, all right, fantastic. You were making a point. The connection was a bit uh, um, um, hitchy and all. So, so I'm bad. That's all right. Yes, please. Um, I, I will draw inference from what happened in Kenya. Democracy is all about listening to the people. If you cannot listen to the heartbeat of the people in constitutional democracy, then you are a despot. Then you are not governing. You are just you are just driving what you think you are, what you, what you think you are doing. You, you're driving it with a naked force. That's what it is. Look around the world and see that the constitutional democracy, wherever it has thrived, thrived, is all about listening to the habits of the people. Take, for instance, what happened recently in Kenya. There was a turn, there was a, 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 an immediate turn in, in, in policy, policy formulation and policy policy implementation during the, during the protest. Now there was a protest in Nigeria about a hardship. And then just a few weeks after that protest, you are increasing the pump price of fuel. Is that not the height of insensitivity? What were the people yearning for? Was it not included in what they were yearning for? They said they could not bear it any longer. That was Nigeria. That's what Nigerians were saying. And then we are grappling with another hype, another hike in the in the in the, in the, in the pump price of fuel. That that is insensitive. And Mr. President should look around him and then check the insincerity of people that are driving his economic policies, people that are advising him on the national issues, and then have a rethink. Have a rethink and look at Nigerians and what they are going through. He is a human being like every other person in the street. It does not matter how he has been placed. Tomorrow, it will be another person's turn. Now, now, now the, the, Afeni Ferry, Afeni, the Afeni Ferry group has uh, outrightly called on President Bola Ametinubu to order NNPCL to reverse itself on the new four pump price. The People's Democratic Party has knocked hard on the presidency, saying that what they are doing is an outright assault on Nigerians. We are seeing the Labour Congress, uh, the, the NLC, coming out to also, uh, you know, hit hard on the presidency. It appears that at this point, everybody is against this, this policy that uh, the federal government is rolling out, which is, in a way, not very favorable for the masses. People are parking their cars. People are putting up their cars for sale it, within just a few days of, of this intense hardship that Nigerians are facing due to the fuel crisis. We are in, in, in looming danger. Don't you think so, Barrister? And what could be the possible way out uh, out of all of this? Now, this is not a matter of opposition or, or pressure groups. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Nigerians, Nigerians should crave. Nigerians should endeavor to have their voices heard again. I am not going to preach this protest I'm not going to say anything. Um, critics have come up to say that protests that are not organized or maybe people that are organizing it, if they are faceless, it is going to resort into something else. But I do know that protest is not all about going to the street to break down, to bring down the country to its knees, to, 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 to pull down the, the, the social infrastructure and all that. It's not all about that. There are different avenues through which um, um, uh, 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 the voice are going to be heard. One of the avenues is what we're doing presently, at least... The policymakers are hearing us in what we're, what we're saying. Secondly, the people should make their voices heard. They should make their voices to be heard um, in different ways, in different ways, in different fora, in different fora. That is what it should be. Then, then there, are, there, are, there are people, activists, that should, should, should let Mr. President know. If the people advising Mr. President are not sensitive enough to know the plights of Nigerians, other people should rise up to stand to their feet. Other people should rise up to make their voices heard. That is what I'm saying this morning because this is this is this is excruciating. 
people that do not go to the marketplaces, to go to the street, to go to the road and see what Nigerians are passing through, may not realize this. In your air-conditioned car, in your air-conditioned houses, in your posh offices, in your wherever, you may not realize this until you step down to look down and see what the people are passing through. When, when, when did Uncle Terry Refinery they, they mentioned or declared that uh, they will be rolling out... Uh, they will be rolling out petroleum products to uh, local okay. local. We know that yes, car carry on. Car carry on, barrister. You are making a point. Well, if you if you're still there and you yeah, can yeah, still, yeah. Keep... We, we know that hard times we get hard decisions and all that. No, can you, can you hear me? Yes, can I can me? hear you. I think there was a little glitch there, but carry on. Can you hear me? Yes, okay, certainly. Okay, we all know, we all know that hard times beget hard decisions and all that. At the stage of Nigeria developmental issues, we hard decisions here and there are going to be taken, but not in this form. This is quite inhuman. This is insensitive. We need to make Mr. President realize this. This is unacceptable, absolutely. Go and see what people are passing through. We are just going to know what is going to happen. I don't want to go into technicalities. Somebody speaking grammar, everything ending in sophistry, telling us that if the pump price is increased, then um, the, the, the country will be transformed to El Dorado the next minute. Who are you feeding that dust? Who are you feeding that dust? We have traveled far and wide. We know how developed countries run their race. We know well well barrister i i, I believe that uh before they reach the milestone they reach and all that electricity was well, well, I believe you can hear me. When when did Angote Refinery started uh, rolling out its uh, petroleum products, many Nigerians were excited, thinking that it's some sort of beacon of hope and an end to the fuel crisis in the country. However, recently NNPC made a statement. A, a, NNPC made a statement saying. This is what it is. Well, well, Barrister, if you can hear me, recently NNPC made a statement saying that the National Economic Council will be the determiner of how much they are going to be selling fuel per litre. And speculations are that it will likely be well above 1,000 naira, you know, per litre. It, it appears that even though fuel might become available to Nigerians in, in the coming weeks, it will certainly not be affordable and it's almost like nothing has been done. Absolutely, absolutely. And then the question becomes again, the question becomes again, why the concentration on the oil sector? What's the concentration on the oil sector? What is happening to all the other sectors? Is 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 Nigeria is Nigeria uh, 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 oil centric? Is is that the only place we are looking at to drive this economy or to generate uh, 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 to, to to build up the IGR? I am not an economist, but I know that this part these policies are killing me. I don't understand it. They don't know what is happening to the people. I don't want to dive into bringing up with all this. I don't, I don't think it's raising up the bait, raising up the Google post and all that. I don't understand it. it it's, it's, it's most inhuman. That's all I can say. It's most, it's most inhuman. Well, 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 in closing, uh, Barrister, we just, about, we just have about five minutes uh, to go. I, I, I wanted you to touch on the issue of Dangote Refinery. Uh, I believe you didn't hear me clearly when I asked that question. Dangote Refinery made a statement recently saying that NEC will determine how much they're going to sell petrol to Nigerians. Currently, Nigerians are grappling to buy petrol at 800 and something naira, 900 and something naira. And Nangote Refinery is pushing, most likely, to sell at way above 1,000. Don't you think that this is perhaps just a circular movement heading to nowhere 
and just circulating in the same place because it appears like there is a solution but then this solution is only going to cause more hardship to Nigerians. Hello, Barrister. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. There, there's a glitch, but I could. Yeah, I could yes, there's a glitch. But, but did you get my question? Yeah, you are talking about the Dangote refinery that is a kind of. Exactly. Hey, Paul, that's what you're speculating and all that. Yes. If I get you clear, clearly. Yes. 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 Um, I, 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 I don't think, I don't think that is going to be. Dangote, Dangote, um, and countered a lot of hitches in that in Dangote refineries. I think NMPC is one. If they bring up a level playground without exploiting um the real interests of Nigerians, I don't know how much Dangote is going to sell. But he still said that um, um a Federal Executive Council um I, I don't know which body he said, but but a part of the government is going to determine his price. That's what he said. But all I know is that 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 establishment, that outing has been bedeviled by a lot of issues, coming yeah. principally from the government. Leverage. Remember, Dangote is not a rookie in in investment. He has he has done a whole lot of things from cement, and the rest of them. And yes. Nigerians have seen how much they benefited from it. I don't think the oil sector is going to be different, except what is continuous. If they give him that leverage, build an enabling environment for him, give him enough soft landing, I think Nigerians will benefit. Remember, this is one of its kind. For decades, no refinery worked in Nigeria. You can, you and I know that. No refinery worked in Nigeria. So give him, give him, give him, give him that, give him that, uh, that, that uh, 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 leverage. Give him the chance to 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 roll out uh, this initiative. I would have called it. I call it initiative. Now, now, now if so, if so, you if I you remember, if you Nigerians. remember during the the debacle between Dangote Refinery, the NNPCL, and MDPRA, Dangote was accused blatantly of monopoly in the system. However, the NNPCL recently made a statement saying that it would be the sole buyer of. Uh, Dangote PMS. This is according to a report uh, that was released recently. This is monopoly in its full sense by NNPCL. So if NNPCL is accusing Dangote Refinery or Dangote of monopoly, why are they doing the same thing that they are accusing the company of? Now, now you get my point. Now you get the point I'm making. If you are doing what you're supposed to do, why would the issue of monopoly come up? Who gave Dangote the license to go into oil refinery in the first place? The government gave him the license. Then when he was going into there, you didn't know what he was going to do. So it's like coming out to start crying wolf where there's none. That is the problem. So if if, if you were mindful of it, then your own refineries should be working. Because it is, it's, it's abysmally ridiculous that a country like, like Nigeria, I saw in the report yesterday that Nigeria is the biggest oil producer in Africa. I thought Angola overtook. But when I saw it in the scorecard, I was like, this country is finished. Where were we? What have we been doing? No functional refinery. They should bury their head in shame. They should allow them go to move on. They should give him the necessary support. They shouldn't be talking for goodness sake. For crying out loud, they shouldn't be talking. The Nigerian, average Nigerian doesn't even know the harm on this economy. They do not know that fuels have been imported, crude, you import crude every time, and there's no refinery, no functional refinery. You export crude and you import fuel. Who does that? How uh, many countries are doing this? Uh, uh, all right. In the 21st century, all right, they shouldn't be talking. That's my point. They should be talking. I, I, I'm afraid this is all time would permit us to take on this segment of the program. But I must thank you very much for finding the time uh, to join us virtually and share your wealth of knowledge with us concerning this national issue uh, that is very daunting to Nigerians. And hopefully, as a nation, we will collectively move ahead and overcome this obstacle. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That has been uh, Barrister Elias Ofo.
who is a public affairs analyst and also a security expert, speaking to us on issues surrounding the fuel crisis bedeviling the country and ways to push further and overcome uh, some of these impediments to our economic growth.